Hi, if you came to this video, you're probably interested in information about space and space technologies that will appear in the near future. Well then, make some coffee, get comfortable, and let's go. Space Elevator. To open our top, we have the Space Elevator, which is already within our engineering capabilities. Passions around the construction recently, unfortunately, subsided. The reason is that scientists are still unable to get the technology to produce carbon nanotubes of the required strength on an industrial scale. The idea of rocketless launching of cargoes into orbit was suggested by the same person who founded theoretical cosmonautics, Konstantin Eduardovich Tsikhovsky. Inspired by the Eiffel Tower he saw in Paris, he described his vision of a space elevator in the form of a tower of great height. Its top would just be in the geocentric orbit. The elevator tower is based on strong materials that resist compression, but modern ideas of space elevators are still considering versions with cables that must be tensile strength. Although nanotubes are currently recognized as the strongest material and the only one suitable for building an elevator in the form of a tether pulling from a geostationary satellite. The strength of the nanotubes produced in the laboratory is still not up to the calculated strength. Theoretically, strength of nanotubes should be more than 100 GPA, hectopascals in computing system SI. But in practice, the highest extensibility of one layer nanotube was 52 hectopascal, and they broke in an average range from 30 to 50. Scientists are still deciding how to deal with this, but at this point it is impossible to say exactly when the space elevator will be realized. Well, we'll move on. Space City. How many books have been written on the theme of the space city? How many movies and games have been made and filmed, but what if it all became a reality? If one day we can develop very large-scale construction methods in a space vacuum, then creating a habitat becomes very attractive. The absence of gravity is certainly an obstacle to human life, but it is an advantage for space travel. Without gravity, the space habitat becomes a much more economical destination than a planetary colony. The possibility of space city in orbit or near planet Earth multiplies this advantage. Earth life gets most of its energy from photosynthesis or the consumption of photosynthetic organisms. A space habitat placed in orbit around the sun could choose sunlight conditions. In more extreme versions, such as the Dyson region, the cosmic habitat collected all the light emitted by the star, one solar system, even without habitable planets, could accommodate several trillion people. Finally, there may be a permanent spatial habitat supporting the colonization of planets. If the human species one day wants to become an interstellar civilization, it has little choice. It either discovers a way to travel to a negligible fraction of the speed of light, or it accepts that the journey will take more than one generation. In the latter case, the one and only option was to create giant habitats capable of housing the specimen, human, large enough to avoid bloodline. This habitat would be responsible for travel for hundreds or thousands of years. Mining from asteroids or other planets, every year there is less and less resources on Earth such as gold, metal, oil, coal. Also, as far as minerals are vital for modern civilization, a certain number of resources may not be insufficient to continue to develop at the current rate. Metallurgy, automobile manufacturing, electronics manufacturing, science, aerospace industry, and much more depends on minerals. Anticipating of the coming scarcity, experts have long said that the extraction of minerals in space on other planets and asteroids. As far as can be judged, asteroids are a really promising source of the chemical elements and compounds we need. There are two types of asteroids that are of the most interest, water and metal, or rock metal. As for the first, they contain a lot of water. It doesn't make sense to bring water to Earth, but if humans have colonies on the Moon, Mars, or other planets and planetoids, then such asteroids could be sent to colonies. One water asteroid is enough to supply a space colony for many years. As a matter of fact, this is the most common type of asteroid. About 75% of them are in the solar system. Interstellar travel. Interstellar space travel is the fantasy of every five-year-old child within us. 
But as we improve our rockets and space probes, the question arises, can we ever hope to colonize the stars or go to an interstellar journey? Certainly, the sci-fi writers and filmmakers have done a good job, of course. In a colorful story where a man conquers the farthest reaches of space, you would really want to believe it. Unfortunately, before this picture comes true, we will have to overcome many restrictions. For example, the laws of physics, as we see them now. The technology available to mankind today does not allow spacecraft to reach even the nearest star within a single human lifetime. For example, the nearest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri, is 4.2 light-years away. Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to us, which includes Proxima Centauri, is 39 trillion kilometers away. Modern spacecraft can overcome this distance in 70,000 years. It becomes clear that none of the people are able to overcome such distances. From here, we need to find a new way to go interstellar traveling. The second serious problem, even airless space, contains hydrogen bombs and small dust particles. For a spacecraft traveling at 20% of the speed of light, these would become powerful projectiles, slowly but surely destroying the hull of the vehicle. When traveling at close to the speed of light, hydrogen atoms will collide with the starship with an energy equal to the power of the proton beam in the Large Hadron Collider gas pedal at the European Center for Nuclear Research. Neither the ship nor the crew will be able to withstand this. These are limits to the amount of excess heat generated, so it's better to keep the engine power relatively low so that the ship can reach its speed limit for many years. The acceleration of an interstellar ship will probably be quite slow. From Earth, it will be possible to watch the huge cooling radiators gradually turning into red and then white glowing dots. 3D printed houses on Mars How many rumors and talks have we heard about colonizing Mars, but no one has thought about the kind of houses that will be built there? It may surprise you, but they will be 3D printed. And this is no joke. They will be called Sephero, the name in a combination of three words, sphere, iron, ferrum, and water. During the test soil samples conducted by several rovers, it became known that its red color, the red planet, owes to a high content of iron oxide in the soil. That is, to put it simply, rust. For this reason, they decided to use iron and apply it to the construction of houses. There is also much more water on Mars than is commonly thought. NASA estimates that 1.5% to 3% of the water contained in the soil at the permafrost level can easily be turned into liquid by simple condensation techniques. This water could serve not only to sustain human life, but also to water plants, which would serve as a source of food and oxygen and as an insulating material for the house itself. This house would look like a bubble on the surface of Mars, but conceptually would be much larger than an ordinary hemisphere-shaped house. Sparrow could use melted permafrost water as a radiation barrier between the two shells of the structure that form the outer wall. Construction could begin by drilling the central part of the terrain for the intended structure. Will such homes remain after the project is completed? It is not yet known, but the only thing we can say for sure is that the companies intend to be serious and are willing to go all the way. The StarTram Magnetic Space Train Imagine that it would be possible not only to fly into space, but to go by train, exactly get on and go like to another city, only into space. Do you think this is nonsense? No, they really want to create such a project. The train will be called Star Tram, which means Star Train, and will be designed by the people who created the miracle trains that levitate on the Chinese magnetic railroads. They actually fly, but in fact, they ride on an electromagnetic field. Star Tram will operate on the same principle. It will move along the railroad using superconducting cables suspended in the air, which will be held in place by an electromagnetic field. Trains will reach orbit in seconds, and their length will be about 129 kilometers. Scientists claim that this $60 billion invention could revolutionize the industry and make solar energy even cheaper as well as opening up the possibility of unlimited enrichment from mining on asteroids. 
Unfortunately, the video has come to an end. Today we learned about six crowd cosmic technologies, the realization of which is very hard to believe. But if you remember, phones, smartwatches, and even airplanes were also once an unattainable dream. Sign up so you don't miss new and interesting videos.